welcome to this edition of Lee's Open Mic. And today, we're excited to have a very special guest. There he is, Henry Cho. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Thanks for coming you, in. Yeah, good to be here. Henry's been at this quite a while. Uh, I think uh, <coughs> uh, on the national stage, what was it, The Tonight Show? Was uh, that it, probably, that, that or maybe was, a little bit before? That, well, it was before, but that was like my biggest and earliest thing. 1992 was my first uh, Tonight Show. Was, um, uh, was that Johnny still had it, but nah, Jay Leno hosted here, Here's the deal. No, what no, happened? No. I was supposed to be Johnny's last guy, last new guy. Last and new guy, I was yeah. supposed to be his last new guy, and then he announced his retirement. Right. And had he waited three weeks, I'd have been the last new guy. Uh, but then I was there, ready to do it, and in would walk Bette Midler, and she wasn't supposed to be on the show. Well, I'd get bumped. <laughs> And then the next week I'd be there ready, and then Clint Eastwood would walk in, yeah. and Burt Reynolds, and right. oh, so, so you kept getting bumped. I kept getting bumped, and you're Mr. like what Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> does to Matt Damon. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Except in real Except life. Except in real life. <laughs> but the great thing is, Mr. Carson was so gracious and so apologetic, and he said, you know, I, I messed up. I'm sorry. We're, I just can't say no to these people. And I said, I don't expect you to say no. You know, hey, if I can get on, great. If not, I understand. Right. So then Jake found out and Jay said hey when I take over if you don't get on uh, before Johnny's done when I take over you'll be my first guy yeah. so I was Jay's first new guy well there so, you go there you go but the, yeah the, the first TV was uh, 87 Showtime Comedy Club Network so yeah. I'm uh, I'm entering my fourth decade of doing this right yeah, you have cool. essentially avoided work your entire life I have never had a real job <laughs> I, uh, I got 23 hours a day to kill what yeah. are you going to do that's fantastic. And before kids, I slept in all my whole life. So, yeah, yeah it was great. You grew up where? In the Born and raised in Knoxville. In Knoxville, okay. Yeah. Born and raised in Knoxville. Uh, moved to L.A. in 89 uh, and mm -hmm. um, been there tw two different stints. Came back in 80, uh, 94, right after the big earthquake. Not mm -hmm. a coincidence. Yeah. Uh, 94 earthquake. It hit at 4.30 in the morning, and that was my seventh earthquake. So the first one scared me to death because it's my first one, but it helped me too because I was bowling. So, get that. okay, thank you. There's an earthquake joke for So then, I, uh, 94 was crazy though. It had 4.30 in the morning and it, it threw me out of bed. It, it, it would have thrown me over you. And I'm like, you know, I'm laying in bed just bam, up against the wall. And I'm like, whoa. And I was like 35, 40 miles from the epicenter. I, I lived on the beach back then. And uh, I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I'm, you know, and I, I, you know, back then I was single, so I would I slept in the raw. So I grabbed some sweats, and I'm trying to get out of there. And I swear to you, my first thought was, oh, I hope these are the bottoms. <laughs> and of course, you know, no, it was the top. So I'm timing around, <laughs> making a dive where I look like a midget sumo wrestler yeah. you know, when I finally get out there. So then I'm standing there, and I'm looking, and the ocean doesn't look right. Yeah. And there's a pool across the street, and the water's coming out of it. And I thought, oh, it's time for Country Boy to get home. Yeah. So I moved back to Tennessee soon after that. I was going to buy a bunch of land anyway. Bought me a farm outside of Nashville. And uh, then my, met my wife in Nashville. Uh, and there, then, you were. there we were. So then we moved to L.A. My middle kid was born in California. So yeah. we've been there a couple times. So. Um. Who? Why comedy? What, what happened? What, what, what went wrong, yeah. Henry? Well, here's Where? what went wrong. So I was born here. All my other cousins were not. They were born in Korea, uh -huh. and uh, so they came. They grew up with a different mindset than me. Mine was I, I like yours in school: girls, sports, yeah. school. Right. And so uh, I couldn't play pro baseball, so I went to college, went to UT, and um, I never really thought about anything because I, I, I really thought I was just going to play some sport. And then uh, I, uh, I'll never forget, I was in my sixth year of college. Uh, I had five majors. I had a bad advisor. Right. That's what I tell people. So I'm in my sixth year, and uh, my buddy goes, hey, uh, what do you really want to do? And I said, you know what? I'm going to try stand-up comedy because I see Billy Crystal and Steve Martin making the movie and acting, and that's what I want to do, and I don't want to go starve trying to be an actor waiting tables. I'm going to try stand-up. Right. And they're like, well, you're not funny. I go, I know, but I think I can do it. <laughs> true story. This is true, yeah. <clears throat> so never been to a comedy club. Didn't. Mm, so uh, there was a competition. It's a Monday night. Happened to be a funniest person in Tennessee is a Showtime competition, uh -huh. and I thought it was going to be twelve guys like me, uh, just trying it out. Yeah. I get there, and I'm wrong. There are guys, a bunch of feature acts and openers. Yeah, right. And I'm like, wow, these. So I look at my buddies. I go, man, okay, I'm going to go up. I'm number six. Uh -huh. And I said, I'm just going to try not to bomb too bad. And I'll, if, if I eat it, 
well, I'm never doing this again. We yeah. never have to talk about it. I go up and I destroy my first joke. Wow. And I went, wow, okay. You remember that? Yes. What was it? Uh, <clears throat> I went out. It's a true story. Uh, a lady from uh, I at UT, University of Tennessee, this girl came up to me and she had all the annuals. And she goes, I'm on the annual staff. Can I take your picture for the annual? This is an annual. And I'm like, I reckon so. <laughs> so that was my first joke. Yeah. And it was a story. So, because on the way to the comedy club, my buddies are going, I'm in my truck. I got a 74 Ford 300 tree. And uh, my buddies are going, uh, all right, if you're going to do it, tell this story, tell this story, tell this story. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. So I just went up and told the stories. So I, I got a standing ovation, and I walked off stage. So you're bit. And, uh, yeah, I did five minutes, walked off stage. Uh, Jerry Kubach, who owned the Funny Bone chain back then, there were 12 of them, St. Louis, started in St. Louis. Um, he was there because it was a big Showtime thing. I didn't know that. I just thought it was some competition. Right. So Mr. Kubach, Jerry goes, um, so uh, how long have you been in comedy? And I said, uh, that was it. <laughs> and he's like, no, really. And my buddies go, no, yeah. that was it. Yeah. And right. so, boom, and he hired me. I started working on Wednesday. Right. I emceed that week. With no material, really. None. Yeah. Five minutes. And I said, I only got five minutes. He goes, well, do as much as you can. Yeah. So I think by Friday, late show Friday, I had 12 minutes because that's all I did. Yeah. And uh, so Monday competition, I won. Started working on Wednesday. I dropped out of college on Friday. Yeah. And that was 31 years ago. Wow, there you go. Now, Henry, uh, let me ask you this question before I let you go, because I, I know you're a person of faith, mm -hmm. and you're in a you're in a world that is hostile to that. To, total, uh, total, yeah, total hostile, as we know. But in a lot of ways, because I'm the same as you, right? There's a lot of liberty in that too that I don't think they realize that's going on. Yeah, I you know what I mean. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Especially when 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 I'm up there selling a joke about the human condition, mm -hmm. I know what the outcome's going to be eventually. Right. So everything's funny to me. Right. Because I know who's controlling this. Right. So, I mean, is, in some ways it gives you an advantage, I think. Oh, it's a total advantage. You know, people always say, where'd you come up with that? Where'd you come up with that? Had that, had that come pop in your head? And, you know, I, some people I can say, let me tell you, it was, it was a God thing. Yeah. I, I, I still don't know how I do it sometimes, but I understand how I can do it. Right. If that, and that makes sense to you. Absolutely. But in, in, in Hollywood, you know, it's, oh, that's like hocus pocus stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. So my whole thing is, like you just said, I know that if I have a tough show, who cares? Right. There are so much worse things oh, going yeah. on. Right. If that's the worst day of my life, you know, I'm more upset that I chunked a nine iron, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. from a perfect lie. Right. Then me Because that, that wasn't a God thing. Yeah, that was a, no, I wouldn't got that, thing. That was, that was, that was the Indian. The that was the Indian. Yeah. That was the Indian, not the arrow. You're doing <laughs> exactly right. right. Yeah. So, uh, listen. Um, but the other thing I was going to ask you about, because now you've you've set yourself, uh, you got you got standards when it comes to comedy as to what you'll do, what you won't do. Exactly. In in what I always try to impart to younger comics is the formula that which you've developed, which makes you more palatable yes. to a larger audience. Yes. Which generates income yes and I don't for the life of me don't understand why you go down a pathway where you've limited yourself I exactly you know what six months into my comedy career greatest break I had was I worked with Jerry Seinfeld and this is back when there was no Comedy Central and there was no even at the improv even not at this point this is 1986 uh, and Jerry said uh, I've never understood why anyone would work on a joke that you can't do on television. Right. Yeah. And I went, he goes, you're clean for some reason. And I said, yeah, I'm clean because that's kind of how I am. And uh, he said, well, you're very smart because I don't understand why guys work their butts off, hone this joke, and they'll never get to do it on television. Because yeah. that's what the whole goal, even if you're, Henry goes, hey, Henry, I hope you never stop stand-up because you, you got, you understand it. Yeah. He goes, and you may do movies, you may do this or that, but I hope you never stop stand-up. Because you get it. Because the whole goal of being a comedian is write jokes, try them out live, hone them, hone them, hone them, do a sit on TV. I mean, and I'm recycle not a prude, that. I'm not a prude. I mean, I enjoy all different types of comedy. But if I look and see who the guy's making the biggest money right now, 
It's Seinfeld, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. right? It's Gaffigan. And Gaffigan changed. So it's Gaffigan and I have the same management. Yeah. So my, my Brian Regan, we throw him in there. Re Regan's the greatest. There's, yeah. there's, there's us and then there's Brian Regan. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. No one's better than Goofy Regan. Yeah. But so Gaffigan uh, used to just have throwaway bad language. Yeah. Not part, never part of the joke. Just yeah. throw them in. Yeah. So my manager, Alex Murray, was like, you know, why can't you be? What, what? Henry's right, you know, you should try it. So he tried it, and boom. There he goes. I mean, he, yeah. boom. Yeah, I know it. So, you know, you know, and I'll, starting out, you know, my, all the guys I worked with, they were always like, you know, I hope you slip up, because I've never cussed on stage ever. <laughs> well, and they're, it's the mind of a comic, though. They yeah, but they're it. like, I hope you slip yeah, up. They see and they go, but I, yeah. we don't want like a four letter one. We want a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Cho, one of our favorites. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks Great for doing this. Thanks, man. Yeah, you Appreciate got it. it. Guys, that'll do it for this version of Lee's Open Mic.